Uh, Mima Ružić-Čnopković, the president of the Center Living Upright from Novi Sad, Serbia. Thank you for agreeing to participate in this interview. Uh, it is a part of Enel's work on a special issue of the International Journal of Disability and Social Justice, intended to mark 50 years of independent living in 2022. The topic of the interview and the special issue is independent living in Europe and beyond, past, present and future. And Mima, let's start with some questions about the past and the lessons learned from 50 years of independent living advocacy. Um, so the first question, uh, Mima, is uh, how did you first learn about independent living and what was the impact of independent living on your life? Uh, actually, I uh, met Gordon Raikov, uh, the founder of independent living movement in Serbia, I think in 1998 or so, uh, when I was translating the book My Left Foot by Christy Brown, and I was looking for the copyright, and she uh, was uh, she came back from Ireland and we met in Novi Sad occasionally uh, and then she told me that she was living with uh, PA actually. This is my first contact with personal assistance and two years later my mother got sick and I had to decide to what to do to continue with the university studies or to come home, uh, actually the village I was living in before uh, my secondary school is uh, for 20 kilometers far from Avistad. And uh, I made a decision in 44 hours that I will uh, continue with my university studies. I studied uh, Serbian language and literature. And uh, uh, actually I asked my neighbor in the student dormitory to assist me uh, and uh, we spent together in the same room uh, about five years i think so and this is the first uh, form of assistance in the novice that i actually didn't know <laughs> that it is something like that uh, we have uh, uh, in september 2000 we have the summer school for young um, university students or people who finished universities uh, to join the independent uh, disability movement and uh, within the, that uh, it, agenda or program uh, we actually mentioned independent living but uh, it passed two years or so uh, when the center for independent living of serbia came to novi Sad and to it, it, it is also nearby, uh, also at the other, at other summer school for young people and talk to us about independent living. Uh, I was the founder of uh, Novi Sad uh, Association of Students with Disabilities and uh, within the reform of student standard and education, uh, the high uh, high education reform for disabled persons. Uh, we included also independent living, but uh, uh, in Avistad there was no initiative, formal initiative for that. In 2004, I actually, uh, uh, my colleague Liliana Chakmak, who needs, needs assistance for full day assistance, and me were at the first meeting, uh, uh, the city council to talk about funding the PA. Uh, not even then, we didn't know uh, what it, it exactly means. But uh, in 2005, when I was in Sarajevo, uh, it was a project United Unified Voice uh, regional one. And then I met Adolf Ratska and Suad and uh, Zakirovic and um, uh, Kale Gunkola and many others, uh, uh, and uh, we, uh, I was walking, waiting for my assistant to come uh, through the bus charges. It is the main street of Sarajevo, and uh, I jumped or we jumped at each other, adults and I, and then we talked about 
uh, our experiences and I shared with him my experience of living with the assistant in the Osmiskyun dormitory and he asked me to write about it and the uh, Independent Living Institute uh, Institute for Independent Living in Stockholm uh, published it at their website. He told me then that uh, this approach I used, it was actually not, I just um, tried to be uh, correct and to, to uh, communicate with uh, my assistants uh, in the way I would like someone to communicate with me. This is something that we, there was no money. We shared actually the room and uh, uh, I provided for food and for the rent and she, assist, she, she assisted me. And we slept in the same room and in the same room was the office of the association. So, so it was much harder for her than to me because I was working for 20 hours per day and she always listened to the phone uh, ringing and choking. And one day we counted, it was 45 or so uh, uh, calls by phone. So it was really <laughs> silly situation, but we survived. Uh, in 2004, I started, uh, uh, actually I finished my um, university uh, and entered the, uh, um, actually I finished uh, both levels, specialized studies as well. Uh, and uh, I, uh, when I lost the, the, the track of when the exams should be announced and uh, not be appears uh, anymore with students, I saw that it's, it's time to go somewhere else. Actually, uh, the Center Living Upright uh, was founded in 2000 by Handicap International, no, open as a counseling center for disabled persons as a psychosocial uh, support. And uh, uh, in 2002, uh, it was founded as an independent uh, NGO. And uh, in 2004, we actually started uh, negotiating with uh, with the city for PA, and in two, in two thousand eight, uh, uh, there was a girl also student from Subotica. It is uh, very close to Novisad, a small city, and she was very uh, uh, she she needed to enter the university because of her capacity, but she needed a twenty four hour of assistance. And then we actually uh, uh, fundraised and um, the provincial government provided the first uh, amount of money for four of us or five, uh, no, six actually, two uh, workers and four students. And in, two, in 2009, the city of Novi Sad approved the first project, uh, pilot project for personal assistance, and it was in 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 pilot phase till 2020, actually, uh, and it was a long process of negotiation. To uh, in 2011, uh, so, um, law on social protection was adopted uh, in Serbia and into introduced for the first time personal assistance. Gordon Rykov was the uh, parliament member at that time and uh, actually she uh, participated along with other colleagues in the working groups. Uh, we, as a country we actually had the luck at that time because uh, the national strategy uh, for improvement of social of social position of disabled persons uh, adopted in the same year as the convention was uh, and also uh, the law on hand of anti-discrimination of or law against the discrimination of disabled persons so uh, these two docu documents were most synchronized with the uh, text of the convention, actually the draft of the convention, because convention, it was uh, adopted in April, convention was adopted in December. So uh, in that moment until 
2018, we we follow as as a state. Uh, Serbia followed the steps of the international movement, and after 2008, it started go down. I don't know how to explain. At the moment, actually, got tired and think that when, when we uh, get that uh, legislation, we need to uh, we don't need to work further uh, so hard. So it it gets starting slower and slower. And at the same time, the uh, uh, political circumstances also change. So uh, in this moment, it is not very good situation here. But uh, in Novi Sad, we actually managed after 10 years of negotiation. Uh, oh my God, what I did. Okay. No, no, it's okay, Mima. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, we uh, managed to persuade the city to approve the full assistance uh, for those who are eligible within the national uh, rule book of minimal standards. So uh, the Novi Sad is the, one, uh, the only city in, or uh, local, um, how to say, local community in uh, Serbia that provides full assistance actually now for five people. The number of people are stated every year. It is according to the level of budget. But uh, the rest, uh, it's now 31, which is very, very small number, uh, actually has a right on uh, 52 to 80 hours per week. So uh, if somebody approves uh, that uh, he or she uh, has um, more of the working or educational obligation, or if somebody got sick or family members got sick, uh, they, uh, uh, the Center for Social Work approves a, large, a larger number of hours. And it is only here. It's uh, ridiculous that we talk about 36 people, at least uh, 360 people needed. But uh, it is actually a start, having uh, in mind the legislation level, uh, legislation at the national level, and also the approach of the political um, um, stakeholder and also uh, uh, the disability movement as well, because uh, as I say uh, a week ago at the regional at the regional meeting, actually people here are not independent uh, personally at all, and we cannot accept expect that, that they can see independent living of disabled persons as uh, a priority. Uh, thank you, Mima. You started talking a little bit about the present, so uh, maybe we'll get to that in a second. I just wanted to ask you a little bit um, more on the past. You mentioned the role of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, um, that, it, uh, that it has been helpful. Um, I just wanted to ask you what have been um, the biggest uh, challenges uh, in so far, and also who were um, your who who were your allies um, in this process? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is the biggest challenge is that people do not believe that uh, 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 the. Uh, content, uh, content of convention is possible to be uh, implemented here, having in mind the whole mentality and the political and economical and God knows what, which situation. Um, actually, uh, people here are used to minimize their needs, their needs, uh, their standards. Uh, uh, just to uh, something that, uh, for, for example, when we, uh, in 2010, we have 
10 or even one in one moment 17 uh, users uh, through the project and in 2013 the city actually uh, approved only for five or four or five of us and uh, some of them lost the, the the service and in 2017 when uh, we um, uh, assessed the needs again because city uh, decided to approve more money uh, they told us that these five or six year, the years they use the assistance only for hygiene needs or for, for basic needs. Uh, and they were lucky they have someone to come to assist them to go to the toilet or, or to get from the bed or to go in. Uh, it is it is something that uh, put uh, people in a situation just to pressure themselves and to close themselves in in the basic in the in a uh, 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 as my colleague Lila said uh, on biology bio, bio, biological level I don't know how to say it in English but I think that I, um, it it is something like that and at the same time we are. Uh, all pushed uh, this group of people needs that this group of people needs that you just need to uh, think about all all the community not only about yourself but what is the biggest problem is that we have a convention this convention and other conventions uh, as tools uh, that all people each social group of people can live uh, uh independently and fully and uh, i don't know how to say uh, with the dignity it is the word that i needed uh, and uh, actually i devoted my personal life to love but uh, i <laughs> devoted my work to full implementation of the convent uh, of all international treaties uh, in the field of human rights and uh, center living up right actually uh, its mission is full implementation of uh, UN CRPD and also other treaties and as the precondition for uh, living independently and we uh, offers the services and support especially peer support to all people not only for disabled people and uh, having in mind all impacts of independent living movement and the mixtures uh, has actually it it has a very a very good impact and people are interconnected uh, thank you mima and uh, <clears throat> would you say that something has changed in terms of uh, advocating for independent living from when you started as a student to um to now um do you use the same strategies or has has something changed did you yes. have to adopt? In Novi said uh, we use uh, we change the strategy actually sometimes at the daily level we have a plan we have a, an agenda but uh, day, uh, day per day is bringing uh, you need to uh, adopt on, on circumstances and uh, we uh, uh, the line we started it's actually the same now uh, and uh, first uh, five years or even more uh, Lila and I were in the middle of negotiation process uh, and in 99 in 2019 uh, actually uh, it was uh, several meetings with the city of Novi Sad when uh, I actually say that uh, from the personal assistance from the personal um, standpoint that I will um, not um, support anything that is beyond the convention and even uh, I was suggested to enter to join the ENIL um, advisory board uh, in 1990 uh, in Spain. 2019 and uh, it was a uh, day before or night before that meeting in September and I told them that to the assistance of the major assistance of the major that I will not accept that call 
if the city stops uh, or if the city continue uh, to not implement the convention and they understand it very well it was uh, uh, the strategy for that day for example and uh, afterwards we actually managed because the city was uh, ready to uh, move the whole service to uh, disabled persons in Novi Sad, including PA service to the special schools without providing the choice. And that, thanks to your letter, actually, uh, they didn't actually understood the letter. They didn't understand the letter. They were ready to just to uh, reply what the city was doing for us and then i told them not to do to be a sh uh, to shame themselves because what they were doing uh, and they, what they are doing now is against the convention but uh, uh, assistance uh, of, um, um, the assistant of the head of the administration for social protection understood uh, the importance of the right to, of, to choose and uh, or of choice and she suggested to um, the way how people can choose between uh, license providers uh, and since we have two of them one is the center living up right the other, the other is special school uh, i hope that after the changing of legislation, other providers also will be available. Uh, now, only in Novi Sad, there was no public procurement. Uh, there was no indirect um, through several level of funding. But when Search Center for Social Work uh, decides that someone has the right to uh, be paid for personal assistance, on my or on somebody else's name, uh, uh, city uh, transferred the money to the license, licensed organization or special school. Unfortunately, uh, I think now 30 person decided for center living upright. Uh, the rest of them are uh, using the service by special school. And the uh, differences in the contribution actually in the center living upright, people are co-owners of the process. And in special school, they actually are only users, but most of them actually decide, decided by themselves to be the users, which is that their right. And some of them, I was told it last month, uh, decided not to use the service by the center living upright because we, um, uh, cooperates with LGBT movement. <laughs> uh, center is actually for independent living organization for all people, not only for disabled one and ones. And uh, our founders are, are members of LGBT movement as well. Also, also some of us are the members of feminist movement, and we are some kind of mixture of it and i'm proud of that it is it is the something the nicest about the center i think so but people can choose would you say me my is it the people themselves who choose or is it their family members yes. uh, in this case i think that uh, only about because uh, in, uh, law legislation uh, provides the, uh, the obligation uh, uh, users of personal assistance service to per participate financially. 20% of the allowances for someone, uh, someone's uh, care, care or assistance. And it is about 50 euros per month, which is not so um, expensive. But uh, many of them decide to uh, or part of them decide to use the service of special schools uh, just because of not being obliged to participate financially.
because so there is so there is a financial incentive to yes, choose yes. A special school yes. and the than... other reason is uh, actually in the contract uh, central living upright has with its users with not with its users with the co co of it peers who also using the assistance uh, it's that we are um, equal in uh, in providing uh, we are actually co-creating uh, the the service itself, and uh, several of us uh, intensively uh, and far part of them uh, because they are asked to participate in in organization of service itself. So in special school, there is no need for that because uh, experts or one <laughs> of them actually. Uh, organizes everything for everybody and these are the main reasons why they decided for and uh, I actually very I'm very pushing person you know <laughs> for too long and I'm actually expecting from each of us uh, to do the best of ourselves uh, for ourselves no matter who who you are if you are in something you need to be fully in that and some people doesn't like that approach so this is the reason why they why they choose and family members also have impact uh, when uh, because uh, they perceive special schools school as the service general service for disabled persons but in this case it is i can say only for one person i know maybe there is several of them whom I don't know that it is the case. But in this moment, I think that people are not um, aware of their uh, capacity of doing, of, of self-advocacy, of doing for themselves, of, of creating and building the service that will also be, that, that will be available for all of us, not only for disabled person, but uh, for for all citizens as a potential right right sorry yeah thank you Mima. so um coming to the coming um well, we are talking about the present um but um in terms of the barriers you mentioned so you mentioned um really people uh disabled people themselves uh who are um really satisfied with very little or who yes who uh, will rather choose um, the special school over a center for independent living um, you mentioned that um, as a barrier sort of the lack of awareness um, among disabled people about independent living you also mentioned um, um, the change uh, in the process thanks to the change in, in the government and um, sort of the influence of, of, the, of that um, of the government on the on the whole process would you add any other challenges and barriers uh, to yes. you know advocate yes. for getting in actually what uh, since uh, I was I'm now 44 and it was 22 or 20 actually when when I started uh, uh, as a uh, active as an activist, uh, it is half of my life. And uh, when we started pilot phase of service, it was two, 2009, and uh, it uh, it continued actually uh, in 2018 for the larger group of people. It is 10 years uh, when country and the whole Europe actually was in a situation of economical crisis and uh, here the political changes and the uh, assassination of a politician that could uh, of the political leader that uh, was in the middle of the reforms and uh, again um, actually i cannot explain the call the poverty became more of became more obvious and uh, uh, a lot of things happened and people actually uh, doesn't do not want uh, to lose from their life 
they, they, they are not ready to devote themselves uh, in um, activism or, or something like that. They just want to live uh, because they already lost 30 years in, in uh, poverty or restrictions or something like that. Uh, uh, and they just want, or even those for younger, there are a group of uh, young people who are now using the assistance, but they are not active in organizing it because they, they have the full life at university or uh, their work or as a sport a sports a sports person uh, they they have professional uh, uh, engagement in sports and uh, in art we have one young academy artist uh, and uh, they are really uh, not uh, it is some uh, i understand that because some uh, some level uh, it one perspective, uh, it is because of uh, we reach to some level of the right and they don't see the need to uh, improve it. It is, it is the one uh, part of the story. The second one is actually uh, that they, they are completely, those of, uh, who are using the assistance, they are completely uh, not included, but in, incorporated or into the social life uh, and disability or uh, um, topic about topics about disability are only one part of of their life. And what what is the best the most challenge because uh, that they cannot see the needs of others or not they see it uh, only uh, when. Uh, the the experience is the same, uh, and then they then can, then can, uh, then they can uh, um, understand or how to say um, um, oh my god then, <laughs> you mean identify with something. identify with yeah. some need and then they do something but what they do they call a center or somebody else they know and ask what you can do for that person and then it it is done they're not uh, ready to offer any kind of peer support or something like that mm -hmm. but uh, what what is good uh, uh, they have information and uh, they can can distinguish what is according to the convention, what is not. It is the level we reached as a uh, as a group or community. I don't know how to say. But we have uh, in the, uh, within the center we have six or seven six. I think so. This moment peer supporters. Uh, three of us are disabled persons. Three of them are not. But uh, but uh, uh, the uh, substance or the content of, of uh, uh, what we share uh, among us or what we share with others are uh, 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 um, how to say in intersectional, and we really offered the basic standards uh, people can use and. Uh, when uh, somebody uh, can uh, or ask or uh, are intending to use uh, peer support, uh, we uh, offer, no offer, he or she is always asked that they can be also the providers. And this is how we improve the group. And each year, uh, one or two person starts uh, uh giving the peers offering the peer support actually and it is the i see it as the greatest uh, achievement of the center because peer support within the center uh, changed life for almost 350 people uh, from 2010 when it started in this uh, uh, form uh, to now, and the only organization in Serbia that offers this uh, this support is Center. And I'm, I'm I, I said that I'm really 
I'm a peer supporter and among all of things that I'm doing, uh, even the research part, because they really love linguistics and everything or, uh, uh, around or connected with my professional choice, I really uh, enjoy the most in offering and uh, even receiving peer, peer support. Yeah, thank you, Mima. I think this um links up well with the next question thinking about the the future um what do you think um having in mind everything uh um you've said and uh, you know lessons learned um in the past what you said 20 plus years of advocacy uh what what would be what do you think should be the priorities um in the next five or so years for independent living advocacy would they would it be um focusing on peer support or other um yes, other? Actually, yes. Uh, uh, at the country level at the state level uh, um uh, we have a uh, um many things uh, get worse than it was 22 years or even five years ago because people are tired and uh, the level of information we received by the uh, all media especially the traditional ones actually uh, keeps people in um, in situation of being uh, ready for everything but not for happiness and in, the, in that, uh, in the, uh, our independent uh, national independent uh, movement actually is afraid to lose of what was gained till now. And it is the, the greatest obstacle because we have actually Center for Living Government has the contract, uh, the agreement with the Center for Independent Living of Serbia on uh, continuous work of, of improvement the, the situation for independent living in Novi Sad and Vojvodina. But the uh, um, Center for Independent Living is um, aware uh, that if we push a uh, higher level uh, having in mind uh, the old professionally uh, and other um, political and other impact that we can lose uh, what we gained and this is why uh, nothing changes uh, uh, for years in, at the national level um, uh, in Novi Sad we choose the other approach we actually didn't uh, included uh, didn't include the larger number of people we were focused on the full service uh, just to show uh, not to show uh, intensively uh, but it was because the uh, demo democracy demographics sorry demographics of people in Novi Sad uh, are like that that we need to uh, to provide full assistance uh, four or five hours per day are not enough uh, people uh, for at least half of the people using it now to to survive so we we uh, from the very moment we use and peer support is necessary uh, we are uh, born no, no, no. <laughs> we are attacked by professional support, starting with psychosocial or something like that. First uh, four years, we actually gain more information about the professionalists. But when the money stopped for, by uh, Handicap International, when they uh, go out from from the project, when, uh, when they went out from the project, uh, actually all the professionals uh, left the center and uh, only few of us who were with personal ex experience uh, continued to work and uh, made the organization like it is now. Um, and this is this is the uh, some kind of lecture that we have from I, I don't uh, I understand that the teacher of us needs to be uh, contributors to this process and we need professionals as allies, but uh, I think that people need all of us 
need to think more about uh, the personal uh, experience um, and to become an expert of experience so in some way uh, in order to push the things further and further because I, I, I know that there's somebody who needs assistance from the very morning to the, <laughs> to the end of my life that I will do all I can it to exist. If you understand what I yeah, yeah. say. So, so do you think Mima, uh, I think it's quite, it's really interesting that both uh, you and the Center for Independent Living also that you have been so focused on the local level and getting, especially um, as you say, getting proper legislation because the service, mm -hmm. uh, the PA service uh, are, um, at the, at the local level is charged for the financing yeah. of the service. Yeah. This is why we are focused at the local. But what do you think that would be the way? Uh, because you said um, there is a fear that if you um, push uh, too hard, that you will lose what you have at the local level. What what would be the solution then to um, to um, spread uh, personal assistance and in general, you know, independent living across the country and uh, perhaps get the traditional organizations uh, on board or is there, do you think there is anything that can be done or it's yes. just not possible? Uh, yeah, I actually, uh, Serbia actually, uh, try to do that and, and Gordon and um, colleagues from the CLI, uh, you will uh, spend 20 or 30 years uh, to unify the voice for independent living among the disability movement in general. And Gordon insisted on uh, consensus uh, uh, among the all a part of independent living, but uh, no matter of what uh, we are talking about for any uh, any any issue, and she really believed uh, in the moment as inter 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 integral and uh, unified, and uh, she uh, pushed uh, uh, and uh, lobbied lobbying was lobbying for. Uh, National Organization of Disabled Persons of Serbia, and uh, it was coordinated by CLI Serbia. And uh, uh, people within the movement, especially uh, at the national and provincial level, is uh, are uh, informed of the basic uh, elements of independent living but they do not believe in it. And this is the main obstacle. Um, uh, I think that it is the same situation in the whole region. Uh, also, I, as, uh, I experienced it, or that in, in Greece when I was there for three weeks. Actually, um, that's our, how to say, the, uh, our attitudes to, family life to, uh, when we expect from my family members to care for each other uh, it is very nice and it is caring and uh, it is okay but it could also be a burden so uh, uh, our movement disability movement in Serbia and also CLI in Serbia as well uh, looked at itself as a family and that we need to um, worry and care about the interests of the family. Uh, uh, and what else is the issue is that we, uh, our movement uh, doesn't uh, see the international treaty, any of them, must, uh, even uh, UNCRPD, they know for it, but they really do not use it because they are national. And this is uh, this movement can uh, make a change only if we uh, see its international dimension. Uh, I talk about Europe for your Europe level as well. I was really sorry. Uh, 
Um, sad, no, sorry. Sad when the war in Ukraine starts started because uh, I believed and I still believe that our uh, movement, uh, the disability international disability movement, has the capacity to stop any of such situation in the world having in mind what uh, we uh, personally or as a group survived throughout centuries especially in 20th century uh, and uh, dealing with fascism fascism was uh, even earlier but it was not uh, diagnosed uh, diagnosed i'm sorry my english is not very well and also it was not uh, put in uh, some kind of explanation or no legislation uh, what it is or what it is not but uh, in this moment uh, i read uh, this morning that uh, people uh, cut the ears or uh, take off the two teeth from uh, other people in 2022 and i cannot understand why we need to um, focus uh, ourselves uh, as i'm talking about disabled persons now who are, have all the paper that we are that uh, are focused on that that we are in need for something when we can bring our experience on board and to push and to um, how to say advocate that any situation that disabling uh, all people uh, need to be stopped because we know what we survived and what we are surviving now i think also that about women in general and lgbt people in, in perspective of uh, what people survived for each from the other because disablement is a general uh, it's not only for 15 percentage of of world citizens we are disabling each other at a daily basis in any aspect of life and this is something that is uh, some kind of uh, legacy of disability movement that need to be put on the general agenda as equalization of opportunities was put uh, from the feminist movement or uh, uh, how oh, I have the most, uh, the, the best principles I ever heard or I believe in is the personal, this political uh, at the same time. It is from the feminist movement and it is something that we also need to, uh, I am uh, I'm implementing that principle uh, with each of my word or uh, act every day, even in, in the home when I'm in the house, I'm now. In. Yeah, thank you, Mima. That's very interesting. And I think we can um, uh, close maybe on the on the question of um, um, young people do. Uh, you mentioned a little bit young people before, but um, I think what, what you were just saying is very interested, interesting. It is a different approach. Uh, and do the are there young people in Serbia who also see it this way, the way you do, or you think they'd be more inclined to uh, to be involved in the disability movement if if uh, we were to take this approach? Or um, what do you think in general are the perspectives of involving young people in Serbia? Um, okay. It, it's very challenging issue actually not because there are no young people but uh, um, our disability movement in general do not work uh, much uh, for motivating young persons or educating young person to to 
jump in <laughs> when you jump once you will stay forever so it is the same it is the fact it was actually the fact with me but uh, uh, now i think that in, in last two years or or more there are summer schools or um, other form of education organized by national organization of, of persons with disabilities that uh, uh, is focused on introducing persons, uh, young people with the basics of uh, disability movements, of social models, and even I, I believe that they uh, have the PA and independent living in, in the agenda. And uh, uh, there are uh, several groups of young people, young disabled people that are formed uh, formally or informally, and they are active. But what, uh, what actually uh, I see as an issue, and this is uh, the center living upright approach, uh, or my uh, and uh, co my colleagues approach. Actually, I have I had very very uh, a great mentorship within uh, university studies, and uh, uh, in some kind. Uh, I tried through my work with all the people, especially the younger ones, uh, to be uh, to offer that approach uh, in any other situation, not only academic one. And it is fruitful. Uh, people actually start to think uh, and uh, to work. And many, uh, some of them are disabled, some, some of them are not. We are not focused uh, as a center only on disabled person, uh, disabled young people, but for all, uh, we are open and um, for all young people and we uh, actually offer them a mixture of uh, human rights outcomes or uh, legacy. Uh, to choose what they uh, find themselves uh, the best in, in which part, and or to put them together and to use them as tools. And uh, there are several of them who actually succeeded. And one of them, uh, you are in a, you are I, I wrote you about that, but I I, I need to to repeat it a little. Now, you are one of two persons I know who are not with personal experience or, or uh, we think that you are not, uh, uh, that I really believe uh, on what you, what you are doing and how you are doing that. Uh, because of you, uh, I heard you once in the um, government building of Serbia, it was about, I don't know, seven years ago or even more, when you stop the process by telling the minister or the secretary of the ministry that uh, the convention needed to be implemented fully. And this is something that uh, uh, most of uh, disabled leaders are not ready to do uh, from then to now. This is uh, something that I really uh, expect. It is the standard you showed me that needed to be uh, implemented uh, continually and without a reservation. And there are also one person who is younger than we are, uh, who, who, who has the same approach. And she actually, uh, because of her uh, di more direct approach than mine is, has the greater influence that uh, in young people she is talking about uh, and she's working about. Now she has about 10, uh, uh, she, uh, some kind of mentor for 10 young people from, from Mavita and also from other, other cities. Sorry for, for this. No, no, thank uh, you. Thank you, Iman. It's a, thank you for the, you know, it's appreciated. Okay. Uh, although the interview is, a, is so much about you and it was great talking uh, talking to you. Uh, you've said uh, a lot of interesting things and I think, um, yes, a lot of, uh, there is a lot of food for thought in what you said. I just wanted to, um, 
end perhaps by um, asking you if there's anything you know else you wanted to to say that you haven't had a chance to say um, today as the final final thoughts. Yes, actually, what I forgot for uh, it is about the first question. We are lucky to have uh, uh, um, a lot of uh, role models or teachers among uh, independent living leaders, starting with Ed Roberts. Uh, he is actually the reason, his work is actually the reason why we are talking now. And uh, to till today, uh, it is something that is the most, uh, our first president, Center Living Upright, uh, has one, three presidents before me, uh, no, two. Actually, she said that the, uh, the greatest uh, uh, value or um, that outcomes from the Center Living Upright, and I would say it is uh, for the full independent living movement, are people. And our best investment actually are people. And I think that uh, uh, our uh, older colleagues just uh, uh, in some point need to, to change the perspective or the way of sharing something with others. But uh, actually, we need that intergeneration connection in order to push the, uh, the, the things forward uh, in the future and to have a line. This is why actually I uh, was uh, honored to, um, uh, to, to create that book of garden like story, uh, life story with her uh, as, a whole, as, a, as equal participants because it was really, a uh, big uh, challenge and honor to transfer 50 years of someone's work or 70 years of someone's life into the present. And now after that, we all need, we have the basement and we need just to go further, further, further. And I think that she and uh, all of them, uh, starting with Robert, uh, with the head, will be proud of us or will uh, we'll be proud of, will be proud of us when we make real change. Now we are in the middle. I, I told, I'm talking about international level. Yeah, thank you, absolutely. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mima. Just to say that uh, Mima is talking about the book, Vying for a Choice. Uh, it was about the life of Gordana Raikov and Mima. Um, uh, you interviewed uh, Gordana uh, for that book, and it's it's it reads as a, as an interview between as a, as a conversation between the two of you, right? Just to explain to the mm. uh, to the listeners, and it is um, it available is. online uh, to be to be read in full in English. So. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Mima, for the interview. We uh, end here, uh, and um, yes, um, I think we you said everything you wanted, or anything else that no. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Not for now. Thank you so much, and thank you for spending an hour with with you because it is very important to my heart. Thank you, thank you, Mima.